Starting out here, we have for chapter five, calculating z-scores and comparing two values. So to calculate a z-score, we have to do observation minus mean over standard deviation. Now I want you to think about the top of that. Observation minus mean is just how far is an observation from the mean? Then we divide by the standard deviation to say, well, how far is this distance in terms of standard deviations? So defining a z-score is just how many standard deviations is the observation away from the mean? That's all a z-score is, is how many standard deviations above or below the mean is an observation. So let's go ahead and just do a fake z-score here for a moment. There's a, a question you have on your homework that's very much like this. Let's go ahead and turn the calculator on right here. So it says something like the average test for STAT-201 was a 70. Johnny scored an 80 and the class had a standard deviation of 5. What was his z-score? So you can do it in your head. You can say, well, how far away was his score? We take observation minus mean. So he scored an 80 and the average was a 70. He was 10 higher. Then we take that and we divide by the standard deviation. So that's all it is, is how far was the observation away? And how many standard deviations is that? And if you think about it yourself, if you go 70, 75, 80, 80 is two standard deviations away from the mean. The mean was 70, and we are two standard deviations because the standard deviation is five above the mean. That's all we're doing right here. And if we wanted to compare two values, we can say which one was more odd, Johnny or Susie. Susie scored a 64. Now a 64 is six lower than the mean. So we're gonna do this one a bit different because we can do observation minus mean, or we can just acknowledge that her score is negative six below the mean. And we would have got that from observation minus mean. And so we're doing the formula right here, and let's divide by standard deviation, and we get negative 1.2. So looking at this right here, observation minus mean over standard deviation tells us how many standard deviations someone was away in this, uh, in this distribution of test scores. And the person who was more odd is Johnny, because Johnny scored much higher than Susie did scoring much lower because it's just saying who was closer to the mean, who was more standard deviations away from the mean. And Johnny was more standard deviations above the mean than Susie. So he is odder in terms of who was closer to the mean. I can't stress enough the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. This is essential to your knowledge, completely and utterly essential. Looking at the graphic right here, we actually have the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, and it's broken down. This is this is when you really have it down if you know these numbers. Now, you'll notice if you add up this right here, 68% of the data is within negative 1 and positive 1. 95%, if you add up all these numbers, you'll get 95 is within negative 2 to positive 2. And 99.7% of the data is within negative 3 to positive 3. So 68, 95, 99.7. And you can even see that outside of 99.7 is 0.3. And divide that in half. And I often do this with my hands where I say inside, inside 68, and now what's outside 68? 32. So then you have to cut that in half when you go to the outside now. So that'd be 16 on this side and 16 on this side. And look, when you add this up, 13.5, 2.35, and 0.15, everything from here over is 16, everything from here over is 16. And if you add up anything in any which way and you add up it all, you should get 100%. Lots of practice is needed with this to get it down. There can be a lot of questions asked. You never know. And if you know these numbers and know how they work and can answer questions with these, you're on the right track for Chapter 5. So next we have the test for normality. Now the test for normality tell us if it's a good idea to use the normal distribution. And we actually have all three tests on the screen. The first test is to simply look at the histogram. And you'll see there's a lot of outliers here. So just looking at the histogram doesn't look like a good idea to use the normal techniques here because there's a lot of outliers. And also we've kind of fit a normal on top of it, which it's bulging out there and it's got too many over here. The next is to look at the normal quantile plot or the normal probability plot. Lots of names. I believe in the notes we often call it the normal probability plot. It goes by normal probability plot, normal quantile plot, and QQ plot. But you in the notes are supposed to know it as a normal probability plot. So know it by that name, and you'll be fine. The normal probability plot 
right here needs to follow a straight line. And it's in no way following this straight line. It's, oh, it's deviating like crazy. It's, it's way off of it. And if it follows a straight line, the more it does, the more normal it is. The more bent it is, the less normal it is. So this is not a good sign for normality. Histogram did not look normal. Normal probability plot was bent, not normal. If it follows that straight line, we call it the fat pencil test because it could be covered by a fat pencil. It's normal or more normal. Finally, we have the goodness of fit test. And you can read the null here. The data is from the normal distribution. That's what we assume to be true until we find small p-values. Now, p-values are probabilities, and significant ones in jump have stars over them. So with this in mind, we would reject that the data is from the normal distribution. We're going to reject that. It says small p-values reject the null. So this small p-value right here for this specific test, specific test, indicates non-normality, and we have evidence that this data does not come from the normal distribution. Now, p-values are used a few other times in this course, a lot of other times later on, so it's important to know that you will see p-values elsewhere, and this is just the p-value for the goodness of fit test. When the p-value for the goodness of fit test is small, it indicates that the data is not normal. And when we say small, we mean the p-value is smaller than 0.05, and Jump will put a star next to it when it is small. So once again, if the histogram looks normal, it's good. If this line is straight and can be covered by a fat pencil, it's good. And if this value for the p-value is above 0.05, it is good, and those all indicate normal normality. What you're seeing on the screen here does not indicate normality. When it comes down to outliers, you're really just looking at things that are three standard deviations above or below the mean. So anything with a z-score that is greater in absolute value than three is an outlier. This would go for negative 3.1, negative 3.2, and it's, if it's three, it's big enough. If it was negative three, that'd be fine. Uh, so anything outside of negative three and positive three are considered outliers. They are more standard deviations away than we would expect most things to be from the mean. Understanding the difference between positive and negative z-scores, a negative z-score is simply something that was below the mean. A positive z-score is something above the mean. A z-score with zero is something on the mean because it's no standard deviations away from the mean. The normal model and the relationship between normal normal model and z-score. So that is very, very, very important here that we know we are using the normal model. That's why we have the nearly normal condition. Because if the data is normal enough, then we're good. We, we kind of assume that to start a lot of times. But we might do some tests to see by looking at the histogram, by looking at the normal probability plot, or doing the goodness of fit test to see if the data is normal enough for us to do it, if it's nearly normal. And we will not be using z-tables. You can use the calculator. It might come in handy. It might not come in handy. And there are some videos for you to check out right here if you want to see how to solve problems. And of course, as always, look at some applet pictures. I have applet pictures included in those videos so you can see what the applet picture would look like, which is very important. I always suggest, and this is my big suggestion for the test, draw out the picture before even looking at the applet pictures. Try to draw a sketch of what you're looking for. You'll see in the videos I do things like the 80th percentile. Could you draw the 80th percentile on a normal curve? The 80th percentile would be between z-scores 0 and 1. And we can check that here by looking at our picture. Because the 50th percentile is right here, and the 84th percentile is right here. I just add on a 34%, and I know the 84th would be right here, the 97.5th would be right here, and the 99.85th would be right here. So I could draw the certain percentile if I wanted, such as like the 80th, I could guess it to be right there. And if I saw an applet picture that had a mark somewhere in here, that would be excellent. If I wanted to find the 90th percentile, I could look over here. The 90th percentile has to be between 84 and 97.5. So I could put a mark somewhere in here, and I would know this is the 90th. The bottom 10% would also be in symmetric view of that. So the bottom 10%, you can see I have to add up till no more than 10%, because this is the bottom 2.5, and this is the bottom 16. So the bottom 10% has to be somewhere in here. I could put a line and say, I'm looking for an applet picture that has something in here. So lots of, lots of ways to ask it. Review the applet, take a look at it, make sure you could draw a picture given a 
mean and standard deviation. And if we ask for a percentage or if we ask for the middle 40%, the middle 80%, if we ask for the middle 40%, that would be in between here and here, between negative one and, and one. That's where the middle 40% is because it's inside the middle 68%. The middle 80% would be between um, somewhere to here all the way over to somewhere in here because it's not quite to 95. Lots of tricky questions, lots of ways to ask them. So please study up and know how to use the applet because you will see applet pictures. So it's very similar to having the applet. Um, and that's my biggest advice. If you know how to use the applet, that's probably the best for you on the test and know the empirical rule. The applet and the empirical rule will get you there. The calculator is just a supplement for the test and it might or might not come into use. Well, if you have questions, email me 